What's up wizards, TypeScript 5.0 beta just dropped. It brings in a whole load of new functionality and new toys that we can play with. I'm gonna be talking about the headline items and showing you exactly what you need to know for the upcoming 5.0. Let's go. To get started, you can add TypeScript at the beta version to your package.json. Then when you're inside a TypeScript file, you can run Command Shift P and select your TypeScript version. And you should use the workspace version 5.0 beta. I'm gonna go quick fire through some of the small changes and we're gonna see the big changes at the end. They've added a new option here to module resolution called bundler. We had some options called node 16 and node next before, but this meant that you had to add the file extension to things that you imported. Using module resolution bundler now means that TypeScript is going to map up to your modern bundler like Vite, ESBuild, SWC, Webpack. So this is an extremely welcome change, but probably your framework is just going to handle it and it's all going to be fine. Another small change they've made is they've slightly improved enums. I'm on record with my thoughts about enums. You can take a look here. Let's say we have an enum called log level with debug, war, and error. And we have a function called log which takes in a level and a message. In previous versions of TypeScript, you could pass any number into here and it would actually work. TypeScript wouldn't give you an error message here. But now you can actually pass in zero for debug, one for warn, and two for error if you really want to. But if you pass something that isn't represented by the enum, then it's going to error at you. If you use literals instead, then this will have the same behavior as before. So it will still force you to pass in log level.debug here instead of the literal value. This is another extreme welcome change, but I don't think it actually changes my overall idea about enums. But you know, safety is good. The other really welcome change here is some speed optimizations in TypeScript itself. This means that the actual package size of TypeScript is now only 58% of what it was. And if you're using TypeScript to build your application or your library, then you're going to see some speed improvements. I imagine you're also going to see some speed improvements if you run TypeScript on CI to lint your project, which is what most people do. So without any changes, this is a massive win. And I'm keen to hear in the comments if you found any improvements. Okay, let's talk about the two big headline items from this release. Number one is const annotations. Const annotations give you a new tool with generics in order to improve the inference that you get when you call functions. Let's say we have a function called roots. The roots parameter takes in an array of t, which is going to be a set of roots. We create a function called add redirect, which is going to redirect from one root to another root. Now let's call this roots function with users, posts, and admin users. And we get back a router at the end of it. Now let's use the add redirect function on that router to redirect from admin users to users. This code doesn't do anything, of course. We could add some implementation inside here if we wanted to, but I'm going to use it to explain how TypeScript infers this T. You notice that even though we've added these three roots here, I can actually add anything to add redirect and it won't yell at me. That's because if we hover over roots, you can see that it's inferred as an array of strings instead of the literal values I've passed in, which means that add redirect down here actually is from string and to string, meaning that it accepts any string. This is quite a difficult problem to solve. There are some some tricks to do it, but in TypeScript 5.0, you can just add a const t to the start here. Now the things that you pass into roots are going to be inferred as their literal. So we get users or posts or admin users. This means that add redirect down here actually has from the root and to the root as well. That means that when we change this, we're actually going to get autocomplete for the options that we have here. So I can either add admin users or posts or users. Quietly, I think this is one of the most important features TypeScript has shipped for a while because I'm starting to see how much easier it makes handling these generics when you care about the literal values. Finally, let's look at decorators. Decorators have been around in TypeScript for a while under an experimental flag, but 5.0 brings them up to speed with the ECMAScript proposal, which is now in stage three, meaning it's in the stage where it gets added to TypeScript. Let's imagine I create a class called SDK. I'm going to add a bunch of methods to this SDK, including get user and get post. I've stubbed them out with different methods, but you could imagine these would go and fetch the post and the user from a database. Let's imagine that I want to log the get user and get post functions. I want to log when the method is called, and I I also want to log when the method resolves. For this, I'd need to make get user async. I'd need to capture the result of promise.resolve, add in a log, and then return the result. I'm then going to have to copy this logic for every single method I have here. If only there were an abstraction where I could just wrap these methods and add some logging to them. This is where decorators come in. They allow you to wrap methods and entire classes in order to add functionality. Let's create a function called log. It's going to take in the original method, which is typed as a function that can take in anything and return anything. As a 
second parameter here, we're going to add underscore context, which is a class method decorator context. Next, we're going to return another function, which is going to be the method. Just like in get user, I'm going to save the result here by calling the original method using original method dot call. This lets us pass this into the original method, meaning it doesn't lose the context of where it's called, in this case, in the SDK. Next, we can return the result. Now let's actually do the logging that we want to do from this decorator. Instead of hard coding get user, we can replace it with underscore context name. This is going to be the name of the method that we've called. And we can replace the ID by JSON stringifying the args that we get. Next, let's log when the function completes too. And now all the code that we need for our decorator is complete. Now, instead of having all of this complicated code down here and repeated code, we can just decorate the functions with log. Now, when get user is called, log will actually be called and it will call the underlying method itself. This means you get a really beautiful descriptive syntax which can abstract away some horrible complicated code. There's a lot more to talk about with decorators and I think I'll do a separate video on typing them properly because as you saw, there was quite a lot of any's in my code. But I'm really excited to see where they go and I feel like this might rejuvenate classes in the JavaScript community a little bit. Since function components took over React, classes have kind of been on the out, but being able to capture abstractions in decorators seems like a really, really nice feature for TypeScript, JavaScript as a whole. So I'm excited, bring the classes back, let's have them. If you like this video, then you'll probably like my beginner's TypeScript tutorial. It takes you from JavaScript newbie up to TypeScript acolyte, basically letting you go out there and get a job with TypeScript. And if you like the beginner's course, then you're gonna love my paid course when it launches probably in March, I think. I've been recording tons and tons of videos for it, and it's gonna be absolutely amazing for turning you into a TypeScript wizard. I'll have another video here for you to watch and a face that you can subscribe to here. This is cool, man. It's nice to see TypeScript moving on up, getting the betas out there, and the real release shouldn't be that far behind. It's been lovely seeing you as always, and I'll see you very soon.